good morning, everyone. Let's continue the story. He's still here. There he is. Thinks he's slick. I can see him. Hold on. Got him. I thought he was sneaky. But he's not. Alright, but seriously, let's continue. I got a lot to do. <clears throat> to finish up part one. Because I'm also going out for Father's Day. To hang out with my dad. Uh, man of lane. 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 <clears throat> <clears throat> what ho chums been given something to do have you as it happens I do have an order to make myself useful sounds like a rather tall order <laughs> since you ask we have to scour the emblem rhyme for survivors what on the around the ice fields on the off chance you'll find someone it'd take forever to finish the job without the benefit of my expertise or more specifically my telescope come friends I know just the spot to begin the search I'll probably regret this, but we may as well humor him. He's gone now. Wait. Yeah, he went back home. Alright, since I was going home, along with the coat, uh, I hate that. For mount purposes, I was also gifted from the Second Legion. Well, match attack mount. I just started and already want, I want to drink water. You know what's worse about being in a place with snow? When it rains. I spy with my little telescope. A massive sheep thing? Or maybe it's a cow. No, not what we're after. Either way. Is that an ether cut? Oh, no, no, just the wind sprite. Other than that, it's all snow, snow, snow. Below, what do I see? Oh, yon hillock. There's no mistaking it. That's a girl. Ah, damn it. You know, now that I think about it again, I should have gotten coffee. A spiper? Show me. <clears throat> Over there, behind a the tree. Looks like she's running away from something, though surely not us. She wouldn't even know we're here unless she had a telescope like mine. 
All I can tell is that she's wearing a green pale dress. Rather fetching one at that. Uh, you know what? I, I got an idea. Oh, she'll be long gone by the time we get anywhere near. We should be able to follow her footprints. I'll let Lucia know where you're heading. Oh, and take these <coughs> warming tixtures with you. The poor girl must be chilled to the bone, if not on the verge of freezing to death. Well, that's actually very thoughtful. Thank you. But won't you need some for yourself? No, no, I'll be fine. As a man of shivering, my honor demands I do no less. And lest we forget, the very reason we are here is to protect those in need. Now go, and Godspeed. Oh, right, I can't do this while I'm in here. Well, out here. There we go, that's better. I'd also wear the hat, but it does cover my luscious locks. Oh, well, someone's doing their mining. Oh. I stopped right on top of them. The trail of fresh footprints leads to the east. Footprints appear to be the same you saw previously. They leads toward the building. We're getting closer, I'm sure of it. First, I thought she's gone inside the building, but the door doesn't look to have opened since, in some time since. She might still be nearby, so we'll keep looking around here. Then again, it's also possible that she ran right past this place. Would you mind searching up ahead? Do I spy with my beautiful eyes? The girl in the green dress anxiously surveys her surroundings. Were you to call out for him in this distance, you might talk a wild beast, so if he's safe to get in closer first, you must do so without drawing her attention. Ah, uh, yes. The stealth mechanic. It feels like someone wants to sell me something.
Oh, I must be imagining things. I kind of hope they don't put these in Dawn Trail unless they're absolutely funny. Because these are kind of tedious when you're first doing them. It's even more hilarious when you pull out your giant mounts just to hide behind something small. Duty complete! You have successfully stealthed your way into scaring someone. Here, still in one piece. Who are you? Stay back. This house is packed with explosives. Take another step and I'll blow this place sky high. Whoa, calm down. Please, we, uh, please, we just want to talk. I'm Alpha now, and this is my sister Alice and our good friend Noren. We have no intention of hurting or taking anything from you or anyone else. I give you my word. We and our comrades came to provide aid to the people of Gollumald. Aid? You savages are the ones responsible for all this. You did this to us. Didn't I promise you? One of the other reasons we came is to find out what happened here. In fact, the Tlaferi are the ones to blame. The ones who laid waste to Gollum. All they won't stop until they destroy the entire world. They're the enemy, our enemy. On the way, we encountered the Imperial sol uh, soldiers, who made the uh, who have been made the thralls. The poor souls are now in our care, and we are striving to cure them of their affliction. You're the first person we met who hasn't enslaved. Hasn't ah, morning who wasn't already enslaved. How are you able to escape the Telophroy's insulin ins influence? Are there any others like you? I'm sorry, I don't mean to overwhelm you. Uh, let's start with introductions. Can you tell me your name? I, my name is Lucinia, and as far as I've managed to stay sane, I've been asking myself the same question ever since that night. That roar. That terrible roar. And then the screams. I was screaming too, I think. I'm not sure, I can't remember. Then came silence. Everything was still. Yeah, it was like waking up from a nightmare. I thought maybe the fighting had stopped, so I stepped outside. Uh, if your hells are real, I saw one that day. I ran past people. Uh, I ran past friends, people I know on my left, eyes vacant, dead, staring at the sky. Others were mad and violent, I saw them struggle with soldiers, but I didn't stay to watch, I fled as far as my legs would take me. Do you have family here? Is this the home?
No, this is Victor's spoils. A mansion for retired soldiers. Or, it was. But now me and my... Me and a few others are um, borrowing it. As the explosives... I was making that up. I just wanted to keep everyone safe, and I didn't know if you were... The truth is, our supplies are running low. You said you're here to help, can you? Of course. Whatever assistance we can provide, we will. Thank you. I've got to tell the others first, though. Wait here. This is everyone. Uh, Licinia says you can be trusted, but these are desperate times. We'd be fools to let foreign troops into our home. Having said that, were you to provide us a means of heating the place? As a sign of goodwill, perhaps we could take you at your word? If that's too much to ask, then leave us be. Time to put my firewood gathering skills to use. Uh, could you provide a spark with a little magic, I'll say? I'll have a fire burning in no time. Maybe we build it under the gazebo? That? The what? Oh, you mean the bower. <laughs> the what? The gazebo? I heard those were dangerous. Uh, sorry, wake it up. My nose is like, ah, uh, allergies. Yes, uh, yes, do as you will. Sorry, I was still finding it hard to come to terms with all that's happened. Now that you're here, though, I was hoping things might change for the better. You know, I've worked up quite a sweat from all that running about, so... I'll leave space around the fire for the others. As you can tell, they're in far worse state than me. We were planning to look somewhere warmer with more food, but... They're not going anywhere until we nurse them back to health. Which I don't know how to do. Is there anything you can do to help them? Hmm... Let me think. I can treat the frostbite and the wounds, but it'll take time for the fire to do its work. That would be a good occasion to make use of long, uh, mana lanes, tinctures, or to can warm the body from the inside out. Would you make sure everyone gets one? I'm just beginning to subside, though I suspect once the fire dies, it'll return with a vengeance. Here. Warming tincture? Never heard of such a thing. Uh, no harm in trying. But tell me, have you heard all of the city? But calling it that seems absurd what's happened. It's nothing but ruins now. The few buildings still standing off on no more than meager protection from the wind and snow. Food production, water purification, the magic tech that sustained us has come to a grinding halt. <sighs> what the machina that remains, operational, cannot run for a lack of cerulean, of course. Cerulean ingans is full of the stuff for all the good it does us. No one here knows how to use the thing. First thing about extraction or refinement. All as well, yes, never better. Here, drink this. Oh, what sweet liberation is this? Is it poison by any chance? Uh, just a joke, a joke. <laughs> if I laugh, it's uh, that I may not weep. So said a poet. Alas, my tears would freeze on my cheek as they fell. No blessed, damned, to bear witness to the fall of the great empire. While our brethren lie dead, or live on as puppets of flesh. First came the war, then came the roar. When morning came, Garlevald was no more. In a cacophony of gunfire explosion that screams our beloved capital raised to the ground. When the rubble rose to the shoulder remnants, the lavish finery kicked in ash that they shoved mindlessly towards the palace. Each bearing a fragment of stone and metal, an offering perhaps to the architect of our destruction? A hopeful few tried to reason with the deranged, only to be beaten for their kindness. But any better than to plead with the horde, I fled with my help. Not my conscience preserved. 
Now, I wait with my fellow cowards for the final judgment. Alright, man, just warm yourself, okay? What do you want? Hmm, a tincture? Maybe as well drink it, I suppose. This? It's a radio. You don't have them where you come from, I take it? <sighs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand wave, explain, explain that they don't know that I'm from Garlemald because I was hanging out with the Second Legion a lot because of my family ties. I was more on the higher end scale than the lower end of the population like these guys. I was upper class, they were middle class. So word wouldn't exactly reach them about me in the academy. So... Despite wearing garlic and a cloak, they could just assume I took it off someone. <clears throat> Use them to listen to messages sent by others, even over great distances. There are different types, but this model is by far the most popular. Made with quality components, crafted with the finest ore. So it's from Locus Amonas, it is. And all I used to sense the capital fell to ruin. The people at the broadcasting station must have either fled or ended up like all the others, because we've been hearing the same music being played over and over again. Home beyond the horizon, an ode to the brave men and women sent to reclaim our ancestral homeland on Locus Amonis. Amenos. Amonis? Amonis. I'm gonna go with Amonis. <clears throat> we may have founded an empire in these frozen wastes, but we always hope to take back what was once ours. This is a solemn reminder, though, that we must suffer great hardship. Better days will surely come. Despite everything, I believe Emperor of ours yet lives, and that he speaks to us through our radios. It's a cunning strategy, faking his murder. He must have foreseen this catastrophe and chosen to conceal himself. That he may one day make his triumphant return. Yes. Yes, I'm sure of it. Emperor of ours will not be defeated so easily. What's that? A warm and tincture? So this is what you gave the others? Thank you. I'll save it for later. Actually, I have a few things to ask you. Ask why? Are you part of a group staying in Latero? I saw the Gators for Gallius troops heading towards the Magna Galactus a few days ago. Are they the ones you encountered? Yes, we ran into them and managed to subdue them all. Oh, and we call the Camp Broken Glass. Camp Broken Glass, you call it? Hmm. Oh my god, I heard about her all there now. Hmm. So how'd you reach the Magna Glasgis? Did you cross the mountains on foot? We actually took airships, but then we crossed on foot. Airships? Then there might be a way to... Lucinia? Where is everyone? Is something to matter? I could have swore I heard someone. Everyone else in there. A voice from inside, you say? You must be imagining things. Everyone's out here. Perhaps a baby honestly found its way into the house. Wouldn't be the first time. Now soldiers scare them off, while the animals have been roaming closer to the settlements. Some have been known to attack people, too. I uh, just an idea. If you are strong enough to defeat the Leganus, then surely a few bees shouldn't pose a threat. If you mind to continue helping us, perhaps you could head to the other side of the lake. There's a small group of tapas living there, people whose job was to extract cerulean. They still do, from what I can tell. I already tried asking if they would share their fuel with us, but they're not willing to give it away. We want food in exchange. Lots of food. That's something we don't have, and can't get it on our own. On top of that, to even reach the den, we have to make our way past all those creatures. Would you be willing to go in our place? We need only enough cerulean to last until the others are strong enough to travel to your camp. If the office still stands, that is. Oh, and I don't expect to give up your own supplies, but then might be another way to pay the tapas. If it's a really you need, then it's a really we shall have. Thank 
you very much. To reach Tapper's Den, you'll need to cross the lake. The ice is thick enough to uh, support a person's weight, but if you'd rather not take the risk, you'll need to take the long way around. And then the entrance can be a bit tricky too. It's easy just to look for someone standing on outside. However, you decide to head there, please be careful. Who goes there? Uh, how did you find us? I was sent from Victor Spoils to collect some cerulean. What do you mean I st Oh, I'll see you stand out like a sore thumb. What do you mean I stand out like a sore thumb? <laughs> the pillow buds over Victor Spoils and giving away our location? You'd have never found us. I highly doubt that. Stuck up our souls. You come waltzing in here to random cerulean with nothing off in return. Huh. <laughs> Looks like the boot's on the other foot now. The capital's gone to shite. I'm sorry to send you to negotiate. I know your game sells sword. They don't give in to the intimidation. They got another thing coming. Oh no, whatever shall I do? Surely... Gentlemen... Do I not have a stun? Oh, right. Stop, please. Consider me intimidated. Oh, am I dead yet? There you are. Just after you you left, the city asked me to go catch up with you in case you needed a hand. Someone must have let it slip that I have a little experience transporting barrels of cerulean. So, this is Dapper's Den. Well then, after you. Who are you? What happened to the guards? Yeah, well, they tried to pick in a fight with someone better than them. It was seems and rebels are here to save the city of Garlemald. How'd you get that from what I said? Doesn't make any goddamn sense. Why in the hell would you pass up this chance to put the Imperial bastards to the sword? Let me guess, none of you are Garlean. You were brought here from other lands? Girvani a Yankshia, Bolja, Damaska, to name a few. So I'm direct here against our will. Others fed bollocks about a better life while put to work extracting Cerulean. All given the steam title of On. Clitzing us On or An? I'm gonna go with On. Let's us firmly at the bottom rung of the ladder. But the old hierarchy means nothing in the new Carlemald, says we. The only thing that escaped more than us let's, or less unscathed is Cerulean Gens. Still sustaining us, even with our paymasters out of the picture. You hear you're experts in drawing up cerulean from the bottom of the lake, but how can you do it if it's frozen over? Ah, wouldn't you like to know? Great secrets, I'm afraid. At any rate, it's not the cerulean is used much for these days with the city in ruins. I think enough to borrow our heaters and save the surplus for later. Though it helps to stave off the cold, it does sort all of that hunger unless we could trade it away. Speaking of which, you have to tell your contingent we got Cerulean by the battlefall if they're interested. We'll exchange it for whatever positions they're willing to spare. We may certainly ask, but if you're all, but if you're all free to go, why you carry on living here? Free to go? Go where? Even if we might get back to our homelands, there's nothing left for us thanks to the Empire. And the knowledge and skills we acquired are working here are practically useless outside of Garlemald. So we are staying with the, staying for the time being. As long as there is a need for Cerulean, we'll find a way to get by. Even if Garlemald, as we know it, is gone for good. Phew, <sighs> God for good.
Regardless of what the Yuswa contingent does for the people of Galamal, the Empire itself really is a thing of the past. For many, that would be cause for celebration, while for others, the whole way of life will have been turned upside down. After all the atrocities committed in the Empire's name, perhaps it's for the best that it's consigned to history. What are the ordinary people? Their lives? Their stories? Should they be forgotten too? Uh, I suppose there'll be plenty of time to ponder that later. For now, let's see about getting some Cerulean. <laughs> so you come seeking Sir William, have you? Mm-hmm. What? Those pure blood that Victor Spoil sent you. To turn to their enemies for help, they must be more desperate than I thought. Then again, Lucidia's got a little sister to think about. A sister? But we only saw Lucidia and three men. It's possible that she died from whatever was ailing her. If she needed treatment, I thought there'd be a way to get it around here. I may have refused Lucidia at first, thinking she'd come back with something to exchange. But I can spare them a bottle's worth of cerulean. Consider a reward for introducing me to the rest of your contingent. Be sure to send them our way, you hear? I can't for the life of me think why Lucinia would keep her sister a secret from us. We can ask her after we deliver the cerulean. Come on, let's hurry back. Stay warm. This isn't right. It's too quiet. I would have thought Alphanel would still be treating them by the fire, but they're nowhere to be seen. I'll look inside the house while you search the outside. They can't have gone far. Maybe they're out gathering more wood. Hmm. Alphanel. Guys? Hello? Where is everyone? Alpha no. They asked me to help carry supplies, but when I followed them back here, they attacked me. Caught me off guard, forced me to defend myself. I feared they fared rather worse than me. <laughs> you can't fool us. <laughs> we know what you're about. Vultures, that's what you are. Waiting in the wings for us to show weakness, then in you swoop. In help, what rot, all a ploy to make us lower our guard. Let you win, put ourselves at your mercy, put us in chains, steal our lands, get your revenge. You're wrong, that's not what any of us want. Save the arguments for later, we got a bigger problem. I found empty medicine bottles in a bed that was still warm. It's true, Lucinia was hiding a sick sister inside the house. No, there's no sign of them either. Where are they? Where did they go? Away from you and yours. If you think I'll tell you, you're a fool. I'd never give up my people. We're trying to help them, you idiot. The sister's ill. The empty bottles prove it. So the medicine ran out or she put it in her pockets to make it easier to carry. Or to avoid the sound of clinking glass. There are beasts everywhere. How could you let them go alone? To protect them from you. our homeland, tainted with the same sorcery used to slay our countrymen. The guardians would shoot and die and suffer the insult. Better for them to flee, keep their purity intact, and be corrupted by your vile magics. We were waiting, waiting for a chance to free them since the moment you arrived. This is getting us nowhere. I cannot say how Lincinia's sister will react when we find them, but with him we must. Go on or without me, both of you. I have need to first tend to my injury and theirs. I'll join you in the search after. Alright, be careful. We'll do our best to find them quickly. 
There's only one path out of here, and that's where we'll start. Oh man, this part. Two sets of fresh footprints. Young women judge by the size. This is definitely them. Come on. Trail stops at the frozen lake. Perhaps they chose this route, not so not as to leave footprints. Can't think of any other reason. Look at this place, it's calling with beasts. I can only imagine how modest be for our ailing sister across the ice. We could really do with Alphano's help, but we can't afford to wait for him. Let's fill it up and look for clues. Saying the snow appears refreshed, judging by the amount, and the victim may have been severely wounded. Tear the blood southwards, south eastwards. bodies are already cold. trail. We found one. They were attacked. They're gone. No. <gasps> Why? Why wouldn't they... Safer to brave the wilds than trust in our magic. We should have... I should have... We can't leave them like this. We have to take them home. What if we're only making it worse? Maybe we don't belong here, but neither do they. Not out here in the wind and the cold.
I heard the story about Varus's voice from beyond the grave. Of course, I didn't believe it, but Licinia and her sister did. Perhaps there is something to the tale after all. I want to understand. So I'm going to borrow this for a while, if that's all right. You had every reason not to trust us. We came as trespassers, invaders. But I pray that in time, we will be more than that to you. That we will find a way to help your loved ones. And see that no more children are left to freeze alone in the snow. There must have been something we could have done, but what? Should we never come here? Will they still be alive if we hadn't? We already caused enough harm here. Let us return to camp before we cause any more. As for those inside the house, we should send someone to take care of them. Someone who isn't us. All we can do now is make a report to Lucia and do everything in our power to prevent further tragedy. So let's linger here no more. Come. What are you doing out here in farmer clothes? In the middle of the Garlemald. As a sage. Uh, Zay and Alphano tell me they have finished the preliminary search for survivors, but I'm afraid of saying much more than that. Lately, they are reluctant to provide details. I ask for your account. Ugh. Managed to find survivors, however, things turn sour. Two ended up dead because they didn't trust us and fled. Thank you for your report. We shall inform the troops of these developments and instruct them to proceed with the utmost caution should they encounter any survivors. Allow me to go and speak with the ones at the Victor's spoils. They may be more willing to listen to a fellow Garlean and accept our offer of assistance. I pray you are right. And though I am loath to burden you any further, should there be an appropriate occasion to speak of Lacinia and her sister? Please do so. I am sorry to have put you through this. My distress is nothing compared to their suffering. So tell me, what else have we learned? As you may have already heard, we have succeeded in curing the members of the Popularis, Maxima identified. They have provided us with some intriguing insights into the current state of Garlemald. The assassination of Emperor Varus was the catalyst for the civil war. Nerva declared his claim to the throne, and his opponents refused to recognize it. Fighting broke out in the capital where Nerva's third legion clashed with the first, who remained loyal to Varus even after his death. Of course, even Imperial warmongers would balk at the idea of turning their shining city into a battleground. 
like burning down the wood to spite the wasps. Neither side would be so mad. Unless something or someone inflamed their animosity to such an extent that they could not help but act against their better judgment. It brings to mind events at the Gimlet Dark, does it not? The Emperor's sudden withdrawal from the front line, specifically. Nerva and his father, Titus, Varus's then political rival, took advantage of rumors that Crown Prince Zenos had been possessed by a demon. Illidibus, what better way to disparage your enemies than with the truth or a close enough approximation? Indeed. But before their accusations could be substantiated, many of Titus's followers were silenced. Uh, while some were merely stripped of their status, others died under curious circumstances. One after another, suddenly and suspiciously. Again, Elidibus. Like as not, he had a hand in it. No evidence was found to implicate Varus, certainly. Nevertheless, Titus, Nerva, and the Third Legion would have judged it a brazen attempt by the Emperor to rid himself of his political enemies. And then, in the midst of this growing turmoil, Varus Soscalvis is murdered. And Garlemald's own prodigal son, Gaius van Belsar, is named the murderer. Shortly thereafter, Nerva claims the right of succession, and in response, the First Legion claims the assassination was part of a coup d'etat orchestrated by Titus and Nerva. So no one is at fault, and everyone else is to blame. I should add that both parties received substantial financial backing, presumably to provide them with the means and encouragement to pursue a swift victory, and that these contributions came from the self-same benefactor. I'd heard House Brutus had been filling the Third Legion's coffers, but the first as well. It would seem so. Though the Popularis determined that the First Legion received funds from a variety of organizations, all had connections to House Brutus. So Fandaniel, in the guise of Arsahi, was playing both sides against each other the entire time. The information we gained from my friends does not end there. One night, shortly after fighting broke out, the capital was shaken by an immense tremor. From that point onward, they have no memories, no recollection of any events, including our clash on the Magna Glacias. But when asked about the Imperial Palace and its bizarre transformation, they somehow recall Emperor Varus giving them orders in their dreams. May the Tower of Babel stand as testament to the glory of Garlemald. This sounds awfully familiar. We have something to show you all. Varys spoke to them through this radio. Perhaps it was a recording, but if not, that would be inexplicable. We are of one mind, then. The ether that permeates the ore used in this device is almost identical to that of the talismans. I see it. While it is likely more by coincidence than design, these devices might also ward against a primal's influence. A picture is beginning to form. If the tremor felt throughout Garlemald was a wave of ether emitted by a primal, then while those within range would have been tempered, those huddled around a radio desperate for news concerning the Civil War would have been spared. No wonder Licinia kept it close. My friends, I must speak with you! A young man was caught trying to steal our supplies. He is a soldier of the Iron Men, we think, but one who has not been made thrall. 
Thankfully, Magni restrained him before blood was spilled. The stranger is outside, if you wish to ask him questions. I think we do. Who do we have here? Garleans? Traitors to your homeland! Have you no shame? I am Lucia Junius, a Temple Knight of Ishgard. And you are? Eulus Pier Norbanus. And that's all you invaders will get from me. We are not here to invade Garlemald. Far from it. Like you, our allies in Eorzea and the Far East fight in defense of their lives and their loved ones even as we speak. But it is the people of Garlemald who have suffered most. This we know. And that is why we have come to offer you our aid, that we may unite against our common foe. Whether you believe me or not, those are the facts. Now, answer me this. Why would a proud soldier of the Empire be reduced to stealing? The situation must be dire indeed for you to go to such lengths. If it is supplies you seek, we would gladly share ours, or turn a blind eye while you leave with your spoils. I will not negotiate. My commander will determine how to deal with you and yours. If you wish to treat with him, I will take you, but no more than three. I don't much like the sound of that. But if we do accept his proposal, I suggest the two of us and... Please allow me and Alizé to act as envoys. May I ask why? We have seen with our own eyes the hardships the Garleans face. How their futures and lives hang in the balance. It's not the warmest invitation, but it's an opportunity to prove our intentions true. Maybe not a chance to make things right, but a chance to make them better. <laughs> what would your mother say if I let you two go by yourselves? I can see that persuading you otherwise is a lost cause, but you will proceed with the utmost care. Couple of children and what? A cell sword. Is this an insult? Not in the least. You will find that they are more than qualified to speak on our behalf. There are many dangers on the road ahead. I will need that back. You will be received as invited guests, so I urge you to observe proper social etiquette and conduct yourselves accordingly. Your safe return takes precedence above all else, remember this. Thancred, in particular, will be worried sick if you're gone too long. May the Fury watch over and keep you. Right. Wink. Thancred. He doesn't like it when I'm gone too long. He gets worried. So, be sure to let him know where I'm going, and I will be back soon. WINK!
We okay. It's taking a long dramatic pause. Are you and the children ready? We'll explain the route once we are outside your camp. If anyone attempts to follow us, we will judge it as an act of hostility and we will not hesitate to take appropriate measures. I would expect nothing less. You have a full cooperation. Alright, that's far enough. Listen carefully. We head over that hill, then follow the road until we reach Liminal Station 4. Children in the lead, once you are, I can see you. We do have names, you know. I'm Alizé and he's Alfno. And last but not least, this is Niren. Niren. Ren. Never heard that name before. No matter, Alfno and Alizé will watch the road ahead while we bring up the rear. There's a line without there being many dangers, so you're on the run. So you're to run, not saunter, run towards the station. If you even think about going for your weapon, the deal's off. If any creatures bar the way, we go around them. Ready to make a dash for the station. Oh, well, tits. Sorry, Eulis. I gotta pick a fight. Oh, they're getting away. This is it. The first stop, that is. Good. Looks like your friends knew better than to follow us. Are these your headquarters? No, we're stopping here so I can check for pursuers. Since it appears you kept your side of the bargain, we can carry on. Whew. <sighs> North of the station is Reggio Demorum, one of the main residential areas, or at least it was. The afflicted roam the streets in packs, they'll tear us to shreds if given a chance. Keep close, no wandering off, understood? From here we'll be heading northeast, keeping to the left of the railway. While the route itself is straightforward, getting past the hordes unseen is anything but. Keep your weapons at the ready. They would attack their own countrymen. Aye, they spare their own, but slaughter the rest without hesitation. Though we'll try to avoid detection, the chances of sneaking by completely unnoticed are slim at best. I'll lead the way, but in the event we are seen, you're all to fight them off. Those two will follow us, provided they can refrain from drawing their weapons. While I doubt they would be foolish enough to stab the guy in the back. <sighs> I take your chance. With that said, let us proceed. Ugh. Boy, what am I doing? Meow. I went too far.
see why our comrades chose you. Eulis, our contingent has a cure for the afflicted, or tempered as we call them. Your people will need to be taken into custody that we may administer the treatment, but they would eventually regain the sanity. Is that so? For all I know, your treatment would simply force them to forsake one master for another. <clears throat> as far as my, me and my legion, as far as I and my legion are concerned, they are no longer our people. They're beyond saving. Those who thought differently and tried to reason with them were butchered for the bleeding hearts. Come, we keep moving. You know what? Actually, I need to check something. Well, it does use carrots. Probably the sunset carrots. Sunset carrot nibbles. I can probably get enough of this stuff to re redo my stock. Oh, <laughs> whoops, almost got into a fight with that guy. The Jotun. Looks like we're not being followed. We will continue onward. <clears throat> mm. I meant what I said. These people deserve only death. I stayed my hand before only out of the desire to remain undiscovered. And that is still the higher priority. We should continue to avoid any unnecessary confrontations. Keep following the railway. They may be tempered, but they still slaughter our countrymen so callously. Yulis. Look where they would come. Would you still stand there and claim they can be cured? Those exposed to vast qualities of a primal's ether may suffer severe corruption. Even with treatment, such victims are beyond salvation. Then you admit it. Now that you've seen that these monstrosities for yourself, perhaps you think twice for speaking of a cure. Oh my... Man, there's one thing that's poisonous, and it's Garlean pride. How funny would it be if I just teleported inside? Actually, you know what? No, it does make sense. Since I used to live in Garlemald, of course I would be able to just easily teleport to all these locations if the Aetherites are still active. We're almost there. You've kept your side of the agreement, so I'll keep mine. This way.
This is Tashium, one of Galamod's largest stations. It now serves as our headquarters. When we see the Center Twins ahead, I'll be with you soon, so wait for me at the bottom of the stairs. It's plain to see why though why they chose this base. Of, uh, oh, it's Alpha no talking. <clears throat> it's plain to see why they chose this as their base of operations. They could have done a lot worse. Even so, I imagine it's not the easiest place to live. Indeed, and if Eulus was willing to make it fairless, turn into camp broken glass and such a food, then their own supplies must be all but exhausted. They may be shielded from the wind and snow, but it's still bitterly cold. Much like Victor spoils, it must be a constant struggle to keep the people warm. <coughs> Lower your voices. While well, you may be here as guests, the others will not take kindly to your presence. My commander is in the locomotive over there. These are their chosen representatives. Very well. Let us hear what they have to say. Yes, sir. I present to you our commander, Lord Quintus Van Kena, Legatus of the First Legion. The first? I had no idea you had survived. We lost our emperor, our city, more than half our troops. For my wounds, I may never take the field again. But we survived, I. In a manner much to your liking, I dare say. We have no intention of adding to your misfortunes, nor do we bear you any ill will. Spare me, though you children may speak in earnest. Overtures of peace ever ring hollow in my ears. So long as man stands to profit from his neighbor's suffering, war is inevitable. Driven from our ancestral homeland into this blasted waste. Yet still you yearned to rob us of our paltry scraps. It was only with Magitek that you learned to keep your distance. Though we knew it was only a matter of time before you regrouped and returned. Conquest and Empire were our only defenses. Emperors Solus and Varys understood this, and through their campaigns saw us grow and prosper. Much blood has been spilled in Garlemald's name, aye. But if it is a choice between yours and mine, then it is hardly a choice at all. I do not deny that a great many conflicts throughout history were driven by the desire or necessity to gain by another's loss. That is not why we are here. Nor have we come to petition your aid in the war with the Telophoroi, grave though that threat may be. Our purpose is simply this. We wish to help you. Let us help you. 
If there is aught that can be done to ease your plight, we would be glad to do it. Perhaps you would. But regardless of the ideals you espouse, your leaders would not send an army into Garlemald if they did not stand to benefit. If we accept their aid, they will expect their efforts to be rewarded once the Telophoroi are no longer a threat. And after compensation and concessions, the great empire would be brought to heel. Her enemies rejoice at her downfall. Our third eye, a mark of shame. We won't stand idly by and let your people be humiliated. And we're not alone in that. We only want to make a difference, to make this world of ours better. Surely you can understand that. What I'm trying to say is, there are so, so many people who just don't care about making you suffer. And maybe that's almost insulting after all the suffering you feel the world has subjected your people to, but... Believe it or not, that's the truth. And now we're here, and all we're asking is for you to tell us what you want, what you hope for. So much blood has been shed, so much lost. All because of this endless war. Who wouldn't want to end it? Can we not work together to face our problems as one? Answer me this, young peacemakers. If a world without conflict is your desire, why reject the unity and prosperity of Garlemald? Is it because we do not share your faith? That we do not share your heritage? That our ideals and virtues differ? That we cherish and hold in the highest that which you do not? Your track record for... It, bringing people into the fold is not exactly great, so don't start with that. Disparity is the root of discord, and peace built on compromise is flawed and fleeting. Happiness for one and all is a dream, and the reality is that to the victor go the spoils. That is why we Garlians will never submit nor surrender. For freedom and for pride, we will remain true to ourselves until the bitter end. That is my hope. It seems there is nothing more to say on the matter. You will remain here while I decide what is to be done with you. Do not be alarmed. No harm will come to you, if you cooperate. We will not resist. However, as your guests, I ask that we be allowed to speak with the other members of your group. As you wish. I had no intention of locking you up, as by dawn you would be frozen stiff and you're no good to me dead. You are free to move about the encampment, but there is one condition. Collar them. What are these? Incentive. You'll be watched at all times. Stray too far or act suspiciously, and we will administer a rather painful shock. 
Stop. Keep away from that one. The champion of Eorzea is not so easily cowed. Even if he allowed himself to be collared, the shock would be no more than an itch. No. If he refuses to obey, we will activate the twins' restraints instead. So this is where he would reveal who I really am, because when word gets out about me being the champion of Eorzea, everyone then knows exactly who I am. As Renatus Jr., bastard of the Second Legion. Even though I'm not really a bastard, but, you know. Two-toned bastard nickname. You needn't worry about us. We'll forget we're even wearing them soon enough. Even now, you still... Why go to such lengths? What is it all for? Because on the coldest, blackest nights, meager though it may be, we must share the warmth of our fire. You are a curious one. A far cry from the merciless barbarian others paint you to be. You will be their warden. Take them away. Yes, sir. My controller's getting low. Oh, I better charge it. I forgot to do that last night. As per Lord Quintus's instructions, I am to supervise you during your time here in Teshem. Well, you ask. No, I don't have a key or any other means to remove your cars, nor would I tell you if I did. If you try anything, you'll soon wish you hadn't. So, do you truly wish to intend to speak with the others, or would that merely a ruse? We are in no hurry to disobey Lord Quintus, if that's what you Perhaps you doubt the wisdom of his decision? Do as you will, but remember, we'll be watching. I catch wind of you do anything untoward, trying to trick our people into turning their coats and the like. The shock calls will be the least of your worries, understood? Though, uh, though we're somewhat compromised, to put it lightly, let's not waste this opportunity. Let's just splitting up and learning what we can of the situation, and above all else, don't use magics of any sort. You, on the other hand, may go wherever you a wish, even outside the camp. I know Phil Fell I couldn't stop you if I tried. Don't forget, if you do anything to endanger our interest, Alpha No and Alize will pay the price. <clears throat> I'll save her for last. Okay. A red mage. <clears throat> the radio is the same model as the one used at Victor's spoils. Perhaps it is what saved the soldiers from being tempered. I know who you are. So-called champion of Eorzea, the two-toned bastard, traitor to Garlemald and the Second Legions. Come to gloat, have you? Oh, that smoke off your face by the blood of our fallen compatriots as well. Uh, <laughs> Damn. 
tilt sutures. All the times, the worst with lot with the striking distance, I can't even muster the strength. When for the third bleeding us, we'd, we'd be the end of you. But Gallius treacherously in the castle of Quintus, his life. But we made our escape. Took shelter in a mansion. Tended to the wound as we prepared to strike back, and then night fell. We got around the radio, and then the roar. The terrible roar. The capital was in chaos, but we were spared. We called this a mercy mind intact, but body broken, a soldier in name alone. I'd cut you down where you stand if I could. Murderer. Came with Ulysses, didn't you? Well, whatever business brought you here, you best keep your hands off that eighth right. It's deactivated. But well, you not mess about with it. Oh, well, this is out the city, built by Gallians. Four Gallians. Could teleport. I'm just gonna exclude that line. Could teleport all over in the blink of an eye, provided there was a terminal nearby. These days, however, we use the eighth right's power to keep this place lit. So that it comes at the cost of its normal function. Hold. It's you, Naren Lucifarius. No, Renatus Lucifarius, Jr. I served under Lord Gaius of the 14th Legion. I was there the night the Praetorium fell. You and your adventures, you killed them. My comrades, my friends, you swept them aside in the dozens as though they were nothing to you. Maybe I am too. This is another faceless enemy to cut down, but it won't be long until our countrymen return. Get what you deserve, mark my words. Did you learn anything of note? Yeah, it's bad here, and also I'm very hated. And your findings are consistent with my own. The plight is desperate indeed. The second the injured are the greatest risk. Without warmth and proper nutrition, I feel they'll soon perish. Whereas there is precious little we can do for them at the present, but I cannot bear to see them suffer. Please, will you help me tend to them? I can't see that well. Ah, oh, thank you. The numbers has decided a little, but I know I won't last much longer. We should look to the others who can still fight. Give them my ration. If me going hungry means someone else lives to see another day, so be it. It's the least I can serve in that way. So those you met fare no better. I was afraid that he would say that. I know we were warned against meddling in our affairs, but we can't leave them like this. Perhaps we might gain permission to have the continued deliver supplies? Quintus may have made his feelings on the matter quite clear, but even he must recognize the unknown position to refuse help. Maybe Eulis could persuade him, but we need to persuade Eulis first. Seen enough. You list the people here have barely enough food and fuel to survive. Have you and the other soldiers been able to procure any more supplies? We've been scavenging provisions from nearby houses. Most families kept kept rather stored away some in the event they were snowed in. Still going out and getting it. it's dangerous work. We got lots of mouths to feed. Feel is great at consent now. We had some cerulean set aside until it was stolen. We haven't identified the culprit. Couldn't have been other refugees. One of the afflicted, for all we know. Either way, we're down to the last strikes. Without the heating they need, these those in poor health aren't going to get worse instead of better. If it's a really you need, our contingent has secured a ready supply. We can have some sent over. We will now accept your charity. 
we can hold on a little longer, the situation is sure to change. Aye, everything will change. One of your comrades mentioned something of the same. That's something of it, have you? Well, from what I've seen, there's little you could do to interfere, so there's no harm in telling you. <sighs> One of our scouts spotted a hooded man issuing instructions to the afflicted, or the bastard's words, loyal servants of the Telophoroi. Then he made his way inside the Imperial Palace, or it stands in its place. When identified the seat of the enemy's power, we realized Lord Quintus dispatched a message to the 10th Legion, saying as much, and instructing them to join forces with the Provincial Legions to prepare for a combined assault on the Tlothroy. Once our allies arrive, your contingent will be sent running for the hills. Then we shall regain the capital by our own hands. And how do you intend to survive in the meantime? At this rate, many of your countrymen will perish long before the reinforcements reach Gothamald. They need help now. Say the word and we will bring you Cerulean. I will speak with Lord Quintus. So, did you agree to it? No, you will not place Garlemald in the dead of our enemies. I have, however, been ordered to search for Sir William outside. As you are under my watch, you will come with me. <sighs> Very well. After all, many hands make light work. <sighs> you lot are more trouble than you're worth. Once we're outside, you will follow my instructions to the letter. We depart shortly. We can now search for Sir William in Regio um, uh, Urbanissima. The first location is Forum Solius, a park in the northwest of the station. You are to remain close at all times and only act as ordered. Follow me. So this is the park. Sorry they found space for one among all these buildings. Actually, the recreational areas came first. The houses were later built around them. A healthy society requires communal spaces for children to play and adults to socialize. This park was named after the founding father of the Empire, the great Solus Soscalvis. Did we come to extract Cerulean from the wrecked Magitek armor? No, we've already drained it dry. Same goes for the rest of the Machina in the vicinity. Uh, but our Cerulean has been stolen, so we must scout the city for every last drop. And while I don't expect them to find it here, I've decided to try one more time, just in case something has been overlooked. I see, then with your permission, we will commence the search.
Though rather small by Garling standards, the structure is reminiscent of a merchant stall. Perhaps it was built for children to play as shopkeeper. There's nothing inside resembling match tech or any devices that would be fueled for a cerulean. Cursor inspector the workman confirms that the fuel canisters have long been drained by Sir William, Julius said. I said Julius, a Julius. Gravity is built in the style of Imperial War Machina, armed with battery weapons and capable of transforming into different configurations. But on closer inspection, it appears to be no more than a children's slide. Several points of interest are marked on the map for form solace. The pond, the children's play areas, to your knowledge, however, none will require the use of ceruleum. Oh, it's you. Any luck? Unfortunately, no. <sighs> oh, there is no sign of any ceruleum. Hmm. Only surprising, but disappointing nonetheless. I couldn't help notice you gazing at the pond. Something the matter? What? Yeah, I mean, no, I'm... It's just, I used to bring my brother and sister here to play. The pond was heated to stop it from freezing over, so like all other children, they just had to wade in the water. They just had to wade in the water and splash about. They stayed there, but then dragged them out. We'd be supping wet when all was said and done, every time. And every time when we'd get home, Mother would scold us, saying we'd catch our death walking around like that. The pond was heated. With cerulean powered heater by chance. I suppose it must have been. Come to think of it, I remember seeing engineers changing out the tank beneath the hatch. But that was a long time ago, when the water still flowed clear and wasn't this brackish muck. I can't see a thing, but I can't remember when the hatch might be. The machinery most likely broken, the amount of filth in there is probably the only reason it hasn't frozen over. Wager it's still unbearably cold though. Eulis, what are your thoughts on magic? The average garland would jump out of the skin if they saw it, but the first had a few foreign insignia, very medicai, so it doesn't scare me. I tell you, you won't mind if I employ a little now. After now, as you have a knack for finding dry wood, why don't you bring me some? Once that's done, a blast of earth fire should do the trick. Leave it to me. You're not planning to go in there, are you? Of course I am. Tank is gonna fetch itself. Nothing so involved as destructing the unprocessed cerulean from a frozen lake like how the tap is doing. I'm talking about a shallow pond in a park. And we have a way of warming ourselves up after. But that's insane. So, fancy a dip. <laughs> Step aside while I drink the pond dry. That way we'll find it in no time. That would be the stupidest thing I've heard in a while, and that's saying something considering who my brother is. Can't fault your enthusiasm, though. Let's do it my way first, and if that doesn't work, then perhaps you can... The oh, musical glitch. You can try your method, with Alphino's help. Uh, 
Alright, if I remember, I think it's over there? Or it's in the middle. Let's see, do I get a first try? You don't want to come to the end the Oh, dang it. Oh, man. Oh, oh, found it. Cerulean obtained. You open the hatch and retrieve the cerulean tank. <laughs> However, your grand discovery comes the great personal cost as you become acutely aware of the freezing cold and the rancid odor emanating from every ill of your body. You lose what Dallas will compend the pinches no shell when you deliver him your prize. <laughs> Here, you'll Hewless. Did you find anything? Ugh, I hope you did. Wait, what did that say? Uncovering hidden treasures and adventures bread and butter. Though one is not normally required to go elbow deep in ice cold stagnant pond water to retrieve it. Nevertheless, many would choose that over mowing down hordes of sovereign beasts or solving annoying puzzles. That's it! And there's still some ceruleum left. Ah, the fire's still not ready. Hold on, I'll give Alphano a hand. Call me an old dawn by the fire, I am reborn. My clothes are mostly dry now, too. I appreciate you recovering the Cerulean, but I wish you'd taken the time to discuss the plan with me beforehand. Despite the way you've been treated and Lord Quintus's eyes, you're still envoys deserving protection. If you were to die on my watch, you would be most displeased. Your concern is duly noted, but all's well that ends well. Ah, there it is. I was reaching back for something. Let's see if this works. Nice. It does. Eulis, you mentioned coming here with your young siblings. Did you grow up in Garlemald? I did. Not far from here. My father was an accomplished researcher in his youth, and for his contributions to the Empire, was awarded an estate. We lived well. Better than many. What was Garlemald like in those days? Everything. It was everything you could imagine, and so much more. Even during the coldest winters, we always found warmth and comfort in home. Coming in from the snow, taking off your coat, sitting on a hot meal with the family, visiting friends and relatives, receiving the same welcome, knowing they had everything they needed. Walking down the street, seeing the lights in all the houses, hearing the faint sounds of laughter and song of happiness. And although the summers came and went all too quickly, in that brief respite, ice would melt and the forgotten grass makes its triumphant return. Grey clouds gave way to blue skies. Some mornings we climbed the top of the tallest building we could find to watch the sunrise. Never again. Those rooftops are rebels, those friends dead, and those memories. But if I could even reclaim a fraction of what we once had. Soon our chance will come. Just need to hold on a little longer.
Alright, and now that you recovered from your escapades in the pond, there's another location I like to search just outside the park. As you can see, the place is littered with remnants of various types of war machina. While my comrades and I have already covered the tanks from the less damaged units, those that took more severe beating are hard to scavenge, so I have to save those for another time. That time being now. Rather than prize them apart piece by piece, we'll be quick to remove the iron casing with compact explosives. With luck, we'll gain access to the tanks without rupturing them. Though the force generated by these devices is relatively weak, we would advise you to stand well clear to avoid being hit by shrapnel. Before even bothering though, you should check the monkey that's really engaged to see if there's any left. Just to provide an accurate reading, even if the unit itself is inactive. If the gauge is broken, I'll let you decide whether to use the explosion or not. Should you need more, come to me. Understood, let's get to work. The age of the universe is broken, giving you a way to determine how much field holes. Well, let's give it a try. You retrieve the war monkey that's really taken by and still half full, or half empty, depending on one's perspective. Either way, Jules was really pleased with the discovery. Oh! I got it right first try. Nice. More explosive? Wait, is that what I think it is? Not only did this tank survive the attack that disabled the war machina in which it was installed, it also escaped the blast of your explosives ex unscathed. If medals for outstanding service were awarded to inanimate objects, the champion among the cerulean tanks would surely deserve this one. You've done it again. Truly, luck is on your side. With this, we should be able to fuel quite a few of the heaters. Time we headed back. Wait here while I go see how Alize and Alphano are faring. Finally escape the watchful gaze of your keepers, Hadley. Sacred? Don't react. You'll only draw attention to yourself. Just carry on as you are and listen. Right. After you left with the Garlean lad, Lucia bade a few of us scouts follow you at a discreet distance. We observed you being led into the station, but decided against venturing inside. When you emerged some time later, and we saw that the twins were sporting Magitek collars, it was clear what had taken place. Now, as quietly as you can, tell me everything. We met with the Legatus of the first. The Legatus himself, eh? Now there's a surprise. This is also the first I've heard of a plan to join forces with the Tenth and storm the Tower of Babel. An interesting development, and perhaps the opportunity we've been waiting for. Our comrades back at the camp also received some rather promising news, but it's still too early to get our hopes up. For now, keeping yourselves out of harm's way comes before all else. Whatever demands the Garleans make, indulge them. With luck, this will all be over soon. Until then. They had not gone far. 
We searched high and low, but no luck, I'm afraid. I might have guessed you'd be the only one to find anything. I wasn't expecting much to begin with. Eventually, there will be nothing left out here for us to safely salvage. For now, this will have to suffice. We should return to the station. Ah, oh, there you are. Heard you'd gone hunting for ceruleum above ground. Brought back a king's ransom? Hardly. But thanks to these three, we have enough to last a little while longer. Well, well. It's not at all as I was expecting, these ones. But for savages, they seem positively docile. Talking shit? Uh, it's a poor attempt at humor. In all honesty, I'm grateful for your efforts. But even with another night of warmth, there are those among us who may not live to see the morrow. I trust your expedition was fruitful. Lord Quintus! Use what you procured to refuel the armor. Sir, what about the heaters for the camp? The time for action is upon us. My men and I have matters to discuss. In the meantime, you are to wait here. Do not forget, you are being watched. for action. What did he mean by that? I can only speculate. Clearly something requiring their Magitech, given what we just heard. Whether they plan to utilize it now, or after they join with the Tenth, is another question. escape this cold? Return to and reclaim the idyllic spaces of which Eula spoke? Finished your war, Council? Alphino and Alizea are to stay here. As our prisoners. They will be released once your comrades have relinquished their supplies and withdrawn from Garlean soil. Until our terms are met, they will be detained at a separate location. After everything we've said and done, this is how you treat us. Our allies have but limited supplies. They may stave off cold and starvation for a short while, but what then? For now. Keeping yourselves out of harm's way comes before all else. Whatever demands the Garleans make, indulge them. Do as he says, guys.
Get them out of here. Alpha now and Alize will be fine, providing they do not resist. You will accompany me back to your camp, where I will meet with your leader and present Lord Quintus's demands. Before we depart, however, there is something I will ask you. Assuming your contingent complies, the supplies will be so written. Your servant will need to be transported here. That task falls to Legionnaires Marcellus and Octavia, who will pilot Magitek Armour to your headquarters. You will inform them that we are leaving shortly. Tell them to ask for the eel. For further details in those words. Once you've seen to that, meet me by the exit. <clears throat> Wait, Marcel, this guy is wounded though. You again. You're prepared to leave. Ask the eel, he said. <laughs> That's to be the way of that after all this. How ironic that you should be the one to deliver the news. Those are my orders, and so be it. For the glory of Gallimald. I kind of wonder what alpha that is. I gotta look that up. I gotta find. I gotta find it. What do you want of me? Uh, you're moving out. Any further questions, ask the ill. Ask the ill? So Lord Quintus has reached a decision. I knew he would understand. I knew he would recognize that it's the savage is a ruthless, merciless creature, and to defeat him, we too must be compromising. I, I'm ready. In the name of Emperor Varus, for the glory of Gollumald, I will fulfill my duty. Jump. Jump, 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 jump. Have you done as instructed? Their duties involve more than transporting supplies, don't they? Duty is rarely a simple thing. We have been given additional orders, though whether we are required to follow them depends entirely on your contingent. You and I are in this together now, like it or not. We have to cooperate. There is one other matter. A place I'd like to visit on the way to your camp. It's a short walk from here. Follow me. Garlemald Restoration when? I'd like to actually go home. Garlemald Restoration slash housing when? Oh, I don't think there'll be anyone here. You listen lingers by the ruins, reluctant to leave and reluctant to stay, unable to move on. This is my home. Our home. At least it was until that night. I was with Lord Quintus when the capital fell, and thus spared. My family 
who did not own a radio were less fortunate. When dawn came, I made my way here. My parents, my little brother and sister, they were still inside. But they weren't themselves, and they... they tried to... and I had to... I had promised to take them away from the capital that very morning. To somewhere safe, to hide until the fighting stopped. I promised. The Garlean flag bears a chain. The bonds between our countrymen. A red link at its center. The blood of the fallen, our loved ones who lived and died for Garlemald. But if she too fell, who would be left to remember them and their sacrifice? What enduring proof would there be that they were ever here? If we had turned to your gods, would they have saved us? Sorry, forget I spoke. We should go. <sighs> it's no use. Believe me, I do not enjoy being here any more than you. But he wanted us to play along, so that is what we will do. Painfully so. Unbearably. <laughs> I've been thinking about what Quintus said. About why no one would accept Garlean rule. Irreconcilable differences. When coexistence isn't an option. Only conquest remains. Varus at Gimlet said much the same. Only by uniting the world beneath a single standard would we rid ourselves of the Asians. United. As one people. One race cleansed of imperfections. A cold and unforgiving vision. And when we fail to live up to their standards, what place is there for us in their world? But the truly sad, truly frustrating thing is how damnably similar it all is to the lofty ideals of Father and the Forum. Non-intervention. Always non-intervention. Protect our knowledge and our people and to hells with the rest of you. And yet, I can see how it happened. Varys and Father looked to their elders for guidance and took their virtues as their own. But for this world was of their making. In who else could they place their trust? All of us lost in a sea of chaos, searching desperately for purpose and meaning. But it shouldn't just be an extension of another's. It has to be ours. It has to be. 
We all have a stake in this world. No one should be silenced. I won't deny that we lack the experience of people such as Father or Quintus. Perhaps they've come to see the world as a series of problems. And the most efficient way of solving them? To reduce everything to fundamental forms. A stone is a stone. A cloud, a cloud. A flower, no more than that. Simple descriptions that strip the subject of distinguishing characteristics. A man is a man, divided according to race, creed, or allegiance, and to some, defined by such associations. Is that what you think? In my misbegotten youth, but what I believed wisdom was no more than aggressive ignorance. I've since learned to look beyond the banners and the politics. To see people as individuals with their own hopes and dreams. As for my dream of building a better world, well, every day I'm reminded that it is far more complex than I had ever imagined. But it only spurs me onward to find the wisdom and the strength to see it through to the very end. All of our supplies and an immediate withdrawal. These are your conditions. Demands. And you forgot about the airship. Once again, you will leave one behind. It will be used to return the prisoners. Their collars will be removed prior to the exchange. So in the end, not even Father's expertly worded rhetoric could deter you from your chosen course. Huh? Not that I thought for a moment that it would. I've no love for violence, of course, but ours is a cause worth fighting for. I just wish he'd realize it too. Sometimes the only way to protect the ones you love is to take a stand, to refuse to suffer in silence. I want you to know I share your conviction. Whether it be on the battlefield or in the debating chamber, I won't back down. I guess what I'm saying is... You've found your own reason to fight. Yes. Yes, I have. God's willing, there will come a day when we can finally lay down our arms and there will be peace. But not until the Telophoroi have been defeated once and for all. And you, brother, will have a vital part to play. By your words and deeds, you'll lead the way. I pray I am up to the task. There'll always be naysayers. Those who think us fools for even trying. It's easy for learned elites to criticize earnest efforts and assert their moral superiority, all without offering alternatives. Not that their sophistry has ever wounded you. So stubborn. And strong. Stronger than you even know. Don't ever change, you hear me? If you stumble, I'll be there to catch you. Or give you a thick ear. Maybe both, for good measure. Thank you, Alice.
<clears throat> the scouts have secured Alizé and Alfino. Their collars were removed without complication as well. They report no casualties, not for their party nor the guards who will wake from their premature slumber in due course. It would appear the situation has changed. I propose new terms. We have information that will be of great interest to Lord Quintus, and I wish to speak with him in person. No. In the event you rejected our first proposal, we came prepared with a second. Whoa! Ambush! More are coming! Make ready! We, the loyal soldiers of the First Legion, proud servants of Garlemald, of the fallen Emperor Varys, shall safeguard these lands from the barbarian hordes until our countrymen return! Uh. Stop, both of you! <sighs> this child may be the worst emissary I have ever seen. We received an urgent communication from the Grand Company of Eorzea. Envoys from the Imperial Army, led by members of the <clears> 10th <throat> Legion, came to Alamigo and requested an audience. They explained that their efforts to coordinate the reclamation of the capital with the aid of the 4th, 5th, 8th and 12th had ended in failure. Well, the 12th is in shambles. I don't know about the 8th, the 5th and the 4th is doing their own thing because they were got their ass handed to them in Boja. You're welcome. The second has remained neutral throughout this entire escapade because they were probably fucked off not to take part in the civil war because quote unquote we're not going to use our magitech to murder our own countrymen. Communication between most legions has broken down entirely. Most of the tenth's conscripts have deserted leaving their forces severely depleted. That is why, unable to continue the fight on their own, they and their allies turn to the Grand Company of Eorzea for aid. Lies. Every word. It is the truth, and I have not finished. The Tenth has requested that we deliver a message to Lord Quintus. Have the ill stand down. You have been listening, my lord? What... what are your orders? <sighs> Inform her... that we will honor the Tenth decision. Bereft of hope... and now dignity. I release you from your duty. All of you. I take solace, your radiance, in the knowledge you are not here to witness our debasement. It was a grand, glorious dream we shared. Of a world united. Of peace and prosperity. We are ghosts, you and I. Memories of days gone by. Bonds forged in blood. 
that I will not see tarnished. You know what's cool? They took the gun that's basically for a machinist and they just basically shrunk it. Like even a handgun. Quickly! We have to reach the station before it's too late. If there is still a chance that Quintus will agree to a truce, we must take it. I just hope we get there before he and his men do something rash. Yeah, I think something was done. Hey, you're the guy who was like real mean to me, but where's Octavia? Much and more has occurred since we last met. As for determining what comes next, we must speak with Lord Quintus. Before we proceed, tell me what you know of the First Legion and the disposition of the forces. Blah 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 blah. They were preparing for war while the refugees in the care were left to go suffering, to go hungry. A reckless short-sighted plan that risked the welfare of the people they are sworn to protect. Nevertheless, we cannot compel them to accept our aid. If we are to arrive in force with the intent to do so, it would only incite panic. But perhaps they can be persuaded to follow one of their own. Go back with Eulus to the station and have him lead the refugees here. Some may be unwilling or unable to leave, but for the time being, I'll take what I can get. Oh, but I was saying the scouts sent to extricate them, should I be at the station. I'll also have other commands in the area, comrades in the area, lend the support should it be needed. Understood. Near and in Eulis. We arrived just before you did, and too late. Too late for what? What's happened? It's Lord Quintus. He took his own life. After the news about the tenth, he relieved us of our duties. Then, when he was alone, he... No. No, he wouldn't. Thancred and the others, assisted by the soldiers, have seen to the remains. 
In due course shall the legators be afforded a proper burial. He released us from our duty. He wanted us to be free. Free to choose our own fate. Without him to guide us were I I have just this moment spoken with Lucia. We are ready to commence the transfer of refugees here to Camp Broken Glass, should they be willing to accept our aid. Some would rather die, but most of us just want to live. As long as the standards be damned, we just want to live. We'll need to speak with the refugees. They'll have to decide for themselves if they wish to come with us. If any would prefer to stay, we can have supplies brought over for them. It will be a hard journey for the others, but we'll see that they reach the camp safely. I... Uh, I... What kind of gunblade is that? The blades is off. Uh, is that the fully upgraded one? Yes. These guys are really rocking the stuff. Ah, uh, I can't tell. I'm always on the hunt for more Garleans. Garlean players, I must say. Though are those affiliated with Garlemald, whether they decide, hey, I was a conscript to such. We're few and far between, but we exist. It was only of a dream, wasn't it? To think we could reclaim it, build it all ourselves. Well, this all began, I sent my daughter and wife, my wife and daughter away at the provinces. There's a chance I might see it again. I'll take it. So take me. Take me with you, please. <clears throat> well, got the anthrite sorted in the end. All it took was a few adjustments, and now it works as well as it ever did. From what I can tell, there's one in the tarum that's functioning as normal. So are you lot are staying, isn't it? Well, now that most of us are packing up and leaving this place, I reckon there'll be more use for me and my skills over at your camp. you, the one who treated me with such kindness. I heard from the others you're not from here. <laughs> I thought you were one of us. I am, technically. Not that it makes much of a difference now. Pure bloods, migrants, savages. After a while, those words start to lose meaning. To all you're left with is anger and fear and hate, and I'm... I'm too tired. If you and yours have come to offer aid, I'd be glad to accept it. Hey, man. Hang in there, okay? Who the, oh, I was about to say, who the hell named their bird useless? No, it's a useless player, and the name is Burb. If it was round, it'd be a Borb. We have much to discuss. I'll rescue the attacker camp Broken Glass. Or we hope to talk with Lord Quintus. But all that can wait. More urgent matters demand our attention. Are there any refugees willing to come to our camp? Mm-hmm. Thank the Twelve. Thank the Twelve. You and I should go first to secure a route back to Camp Broken Glass. With all the creatures and tempering skulk about, I expect we'll have our hands full. It should come in handy. Conqueror's train. Courtesy of our laments and friends. Except for the tempered, though. I'll make a few points that need to be surveying on the map. Once you've taken care of the Rift Ralph, I'll meet you back at our camp.
Oh, dear. No threats. Ah, there you are. As expected, I ran into a few beasts who went down without so much a fight. The tempered proved somewhat troublesome, but those chains should keep them under control until our allies take them into custody. With that taken care of, I'm going to gather a few supplies and then return to the station. While I see to that, would you mind apprising Lucio of our progress? As it happens, I rather some pertinent information from our recent scouting forays, but I'll save that for later. First things first and all that. Got the golden Gabriel. Ah, Niren, I was informed of Quintus's suicide. It has become to a great shock to his men. Love the refugees. I'm told some were receptive to our proposal. But I would hear your first in the camp. I'm not going to be like those cowards who won't say the word. Who will be like, ooh, he unalived himself. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, a lot of people run around here with Magitek. I'm liking that. I am a man, and I will say the word that applies to the situation. The man took his life. Well, the refugees. I'm told some were receptive to our proposal, but I would hear your first in the camp. Hmm. I simply did not hesitate to accept how proves how desperate the situation has become. We'll do our best to make them feel welcome. The troops who participated in the ambush are no exception. They will be afforded the same treatment as any other refugees. Preferably notwithstanding, after all, even if I wanted to make an example of them, there's no one left to learn from it. We'll tell our allies that these soldiers were acting under or direct orders of their legatus, and that following su suicide, they are off. Offered a full and unconditional surrender. Perhaps Quintus thought that had he lived, he would be tried as a war criminal. He and his men would be punished with them. Perhaps by taking his own life, he hoped to absolve them of any culpability. Or perhaps, like too many others, he was a true believer to the end. Who can say? I didn't know the man or his heart, his reasons, noble or otherwise, died with him. It all falls to us to clean up this mess. I assume you're curious about how matters have progressed here in your absence, quite well as it happens. 
Oh, we procured some ruling from Chapter 10. The recently repaired heaters can provide much needed warmth. Furthermore, we've repaired sufficient food for everyone. Those from Tertium shall find a hot meal waiting upon their arrival. There's one for you, so go ahead and get well earned rest. I believe that we're capable of wielding a ladle or two without your assistance. On your way, might I ask you to see how you stole her? <clears throat> she was but recently attending to the wounded, but she's meant to be taking a rest herself. See that she is. One sec. <clears throat> Be right back.
Sorry about that. Had to uh, deal with something. Something important today. Had to make sure things were in low working order. Almost had a knip. Almost had a bit of a freak out. Because the movie theater I'm going to later today said it was closed. But uh, I was like, but no. Yesterday I looked at their movie times for today. Uh, they're just not open yet. <laughs> they literally open like two minutes. Yes, yes. I've been taking proper breaks and imbibing sufficient water. You hear that, people? Drink water. Like I've been doing. Uh, what are the warrior of light? You and the twins have established history of reckless disregard for your own well-being. Well, we're all fortunate enough that none of you have landed yourselves in my care. I've already had quite enough to deal with between the tempered and the first wounded. Alas, though I can mend their bodies, the toll of experience has taken on their hearts and minds is another matter altogether. For their sakes, we mustn't waver, nor must we rush ahead in eagerness to see the day one, and in doing so, invite disaster. Upon settling down for supper, several cutscenes will play in sequence. Yes, yes, it is time to eat. Yeah, he's playing a song. This is handing out drinks. Is that all of them? The last of those who agreed to join us, yes. We left heaters and provisions for those who wish to stay behind. They won't last forever, but hopefully they'll last long enough. For now, I think everyone's earned a rest. We'll see to those in need of medical attention, so take the others with you and get yourselves some hot soup. Ah, and the buddy romance between a man and Lady Sakard begin here. isn't it? All thanks to the resourceful machinists of Ishgard, I might add. On their behalf, I bid you warm yourself to your heart's content. Hold on. Your people might have scribbled a few things on a piece of parchment, but it was our laments and smiths that put the bloody things together. Well, be that as it may, we single-handedly got the interior heating up and running again, didn't we? The hells you did! We were there every step of the way! We? You barely raised a finger to help, you ale-sodden reprobate! 
I did a damn sight more than you, you lily-livered bilge rat. Take that back. Make me. I will not stoop to your level. Here. At ease, man. There's nothing funny in it. I'm from Alamigo, but was a conscript until recently. Used to eat this with the officers. Apparently, it's adapted from a step recipe. This is my first time trying it. And I have to say, it's not half bad. Mmm. It's a bit too flavorful for my liking. <laughs> Perhaps compared to what you're used to. The little things that make life worth living, don't you think? like home I know this is not a dream and yet I felt the same way at the Dragon Song Wars end every morning I would step outside and need to be reminded that it wasn't my imagination that my world had been forever changed And just as I had grown accustomed to the idea, again, you change my world in ways I never thought possible. Were it not for you and your fellow scions, the rifts between man and dragon and myriad tribes might never have been bridged. The grand company of Eorzea the Ilsebad contingent. We owe it all to you. We've shed many tears in recent days of pain and sorrow, triumph and joy. I much prefer the latter. As do I, Lucia. I'm honored to fight by your side. As an Eorzean and Galian both, I shall do all in my power to bring my peoples together. <clears throat> Our peoples. It is a remarkable achievement. Everything that I and the Popularis had hoped for, and more. Would that it had come sooner. Indeed. Too many are not here to see it. And yet, there is a warmth in my breast, as if they still share in this moment. Yes, I know what you mean. On a night like tonight, the wind and cold seem to pass me by.
Being tempered, the talismans quickly. Save me, brave hero. Huh? Ahem. My lord has requested your presence, and I would hate to disappoint him. You... <clears throat> the experiment was a success, but I fear our time is short. Now, it is time for you to awaken. Uh, what food? Good morrow to you. Here, have a taste before it gets cold. Oh, but be sure to remove your helmet. Take a moment, too, to familiarize yourself with that borrowed flesh. Borrowed flesh? What the hell? So, how does it feel? I, for one, find those first moments within a new body to be most refreshing. We had a Magitech engineer by the name of Aulus to thank for this method of soul extraction and implantation. I believe the two of you met briefly in Alamigo. His was a rather sticky end, wasn't it? Thankfully, he was thoughtful enough to leave behind his mind jack technology. I took the liberty of making some improvements and selecting you as my esteemed test subject. Giving back my body, you demented freak. And permit you to go on a righteous rampage instead of partaking in this delicious meal? I think not. I must say, I have gone to great lengths to reunite you with my lord. When I discovered that his friend was in this neck of the woods, I suggested inviting you over for dinner. He never deigned to respond, but I took his silence as a resounding yes. Oh my! Daddy is pleased his grumpy little boy has finally found his playmate. What? Exposition is in order. The Garlean Empire has long outlawed all forms of religion. No gods to worship, no risk of summoning. Brilliantly simple. But people being people must turn to something or someone in their hour of need. Who then? Why, his radiance, the Emperor, of course. As you have observed firsthand, Garlemald has seen better days. The legendary Solus Zos Galvis, dead. Provinces near and far in open rebellion. Our bold new emperor assassinated. 
And that last one even sparked a civil war. What rotten luck. The people cried out for salvation. Their earnest pleas, one might even call them prayers, a supplication united for the Empire to reclaim her former glory. And so their will did manifest, channeled through the corpse of none other than Emperor Varus himself. And lo, the Savior was born, the embodiment of the Galian spirit, their anima. It calls to its subjects, compelling them to take up arms and fight. And just as the wealth and power gravitate towards the Empire's capital, so too does ether from every corner of the globe. The towers with which you and your allies have been so preoccupied were created as an extension of anima itself. An ingenious design. We do not agree, my lord. Does the pursuit of prey you have bested before excite you? Of course not. Absent the challenge, the thrill, your prize is a hollow victory. Butchery. Perhaps you think that to be the extent of my promise. I have no doubt fallen in your estimation since Alamigo. Fair enough. But do not let your disdain deprive you, deprive us, of an opportunity to craft an even more majestic moment of euphoria. I have been honing my craft, as I set the stage for our reunion. Wheresoever there is suffering and despair, you appear to fulfill your duty as defender of this star. The chaos and destruction that my hordes have wrought are my gifts to you alone. At a loss for words? No matter. As you will learn, I have only just begun. Oh, will you not finish your meal? There is only one thing that can sate my hunger, and it would seem my friend has lost his appetite. I hoped this display of civility might prove an entertaining diversion, but clearly we are above such pretensions. While my lifeless body was in the possession of the Asian, I too claimed another's as my own. It was an enlightening experience to fight in an unfamiliar form. Flaws and failings in my technique were plain to see. Whence rises one's true strength? The flesh? The soul? Perhaps you should like to discover the answer for yourself.
My body. All together. The hell do you mean together? No. Whatever would happen if my lord were to greet your friends as you? I shudder to imagine what carnage he would wreak. We'd better hurry if we want to avert the bloodbath. You can thank me later for my generosity. I did hear they nerfed this a bit, because it was difficult when we first started. What the hell, we're outside? Ah, there it is. Your camp, I believe. If I were to hazard a guess, I would say that you, the other you, is making his way there as we speak. Alas, this you will have to walk from here, or run if you can manage it. My lord would be cross if I made it too easy. Such ingratitude. I'd not squander this fighting chance. After all, you've obstacles enough to overcome. Right on cue. Tempered soldiers, with standing orders to kill those not sworn to anima. Under normal circumstances, you would make short work of them. But on this occasion, the odds are not so heavily stacked in your favor. Damn it. Right, I can't play and keep the cup to my face. Uh, a normal, please. Quickly now. Come along. Time to familiarize yourself with your new body. Why don't I just a little bite to the death? diminished capacity. <sighs> Nevertheless, it would perhaps be prudent to keep to the shadows. Scurrying about like a rodent. Borrowed flesh. Forced to inhabit the body of another. Can we fail to breathe this last breath? Pay more respects. For silent pride, when you were positioned in your own body, you may have the capacity to subdue rather than slay this type of soldier. In this battle, you don't have to use the full extent of your powers. Yep. Alright. But I'm gonna need your, your stuff.
Okay. Yeah, come on. Wait. Oh. Medical kit, nice. Don't want to get into a fight. Okay, he's got nothing. Where you find the medical kit in the cockpit? Nice. An immobilized Magistech Reaper. The damage weapon reaches the function to the party found in the identification of new fuel. Oh, cool. Oh. Are you on a turn? Thank goodness. I thought I was the only one left. Oh, the bastards got my hand when they took down my magic reaper. You repair its leg, though it should still work. You take this key. So now it's a rule you might be able to find more in the wreckage. Can I give him a med kit? I wish for help to arrive. Can I leave my comrades? I don't know where I am, would you? I'll try. Gotta find Cerulean though. Days are over. God damn it. Oh, come on. Breathe his last. in the background. Alright, confirm, confirm, he's dead, dead. Ah, uh, this is a dead end. Fuel concealing wreckage? Ah, uh, that seems promising. Be able to remove the tank carrot to another location. Nice, let's go. Ah. My sister does not understand the fact that I am streaming. Nice, another med kit. You know, it'd be scary making this first person. Oh. Uh-oh. Run. It's 
still chasing me? Yeah, he is. Gotta bring him as close as I can before I get into a fight. Oh, he gave up. Nice. Used the Reaper before. Oh, really? Come on, Mazzy. Hold on. What? Disembark the Magic of the Creeper? Oh, that's right. The leg is damaged. Ah. Thank you. Sixteen minutes remain. Stuck on a lamp. You there, please help us. Mm. Ow. You're one of us, right? We need your help. That voice. Oh, they found us. Get ready. Ow. Come on, come on, get up. Crud. Ow. It's going to explode. Get behind the armor. Guys. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. Ow. Ow. Unable to escape the blast, you begin to lose consciousness. <laughs> no. Come on. Stay up. <laughs> Moving.
gotta keep going. Just a little further. It is a miracle we were able to restrain the Tempered without suffering casualties. A welcome one. Arun, Senna, and the others have their hands full as it is. Thankfully, there are enough scales for everyone. And what of Eulus? His symptoms were particularly severe. They were, but others fared still worse, including some brought back from the Magna Glacius. As those in most desperate need take priority, it may be a while before he receives treatment. But rest assured that he will. In the meantime, we must find our missing friend. May the Fury guide you. Of all the bloody times for a disappearing act, Right when the first wave struck, we'd be fools to think it a coincidence. But where even to begin the search? No one saw him leave in the chaos, and we've no trail to follow. While I know full well he can handle himself, I worry all the same. Boop! Ah, oh, speak of the devil. Well, time to call off the search. <laughs> Case closed. That's him, over there. I would appear so. Thou art struggling to perceive his presence. I am. Perhaps. In the aftermath of the wave, there is some residual effect interfering with my faculties. Where have you been? We've been worried sick! Uh, now, now. All's well that ends well. Are you alright? Are you alright? Who are you? No. <laughs> From them, you bastard! Get the hell out of my body! Sadly. That is all we have time for today. The effect has run its course, and back to your own bodies you must go. But where are my manners? You have all traveled so very far, and I have yet to pay my respects. Though in my defense, I was ill-prepared to receive so many uninvited guests. As such, preliminary entertainments were in order. 
A handful of tempered soldiers to hamper your progress. Refugees to command your attention while I siphon the ceruleum from the shadows. Particularly effective, that. Charitable souls that you are, you bent over backwards to aid them. Heedless of the delay. Predictable to a fault. And so my plan approaches completion unhindered. Anima will soon have absorbed the requisite amount of ether. And then shall come the spectacle to end all spectacles. The eldest and most powerful of primals will awaken, and all shall bear witness to the final days! The gods themselves will be my meal. Your dear companions, my dessert. Upon this world I'll feast, and death shall follow in my wake. All your hate, all your rage, you will render unto me. For upon thy life's reel wind too many threads of fate, power, wheel enmeshed with woe. More terrible still is the attrition wrought upon thy companions, as they are swept up in the storm of thine existence. Take heart and protect them well. They will be your strength and your salvation. Thank goodness. He's awake. He's cold too, but am I me? <sighs> Is everyone all right? Perfectly fine, yes. I hope the same can be said of you. <sighs> All right. Everything in working order? Yep. That's me. a relief. Oh, and before I forget, thanks for coming to our rescue. Given recent events, I would be surprised if you weren't feeling a bit poorly. A hearty meal and a long rest would be my recommendation under normal circumstances, but these are anything but. If Van Daniel's boasts are to be believed, we must act quickly. Once you've blown away the cobwebs, we can discuss preparations for our assault on the Tower of Babel. Right. Maybe a quick bite to eat. I didn't get any soup or food. You sent your well? Nothing out of place? No missing bits? Good. I won't promise the same point for Daniel. I won't promise the same for Daniel and Zenos after I'm through with them. How much must these people suffer before they're satisfied? How many cruel, pointless tricks must they play? Put you to the final days of no. This ends now. Are you well enough to make your report? So, so it's over you in the power. And it's using the body of Varus. This anima was summoned using the corpse of Emperor Varus. Does the depravity know no bounds? 
It seems not. More to the point, we can surmise the wave of ether issued from the Tower of Babel, but the primal lurking from within. The primal whose cry rang out rather more loudly in your ears than ours. If we were taken to the Tower itself, then this proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that this that is the beating heart of Telophoroi's machinations. In which case, we have some highly relevant information. As many of you know, ever since we dispatched troops to free the Levieurs, we've been developing a plan to infiltrate the tower. According to... Ugh, it had to be foggy to cover up the literal tower. According to Thankard and its scouts, the main structure is lousy with tempered and enemy magitech. Furthermore, the road leading to it has collapsed, making it difficult to approach in numbers. Thus do we propose dividing our forces into two parties, one to distract and one to infiltrate. The Divisionary Force will be comprised of Shkardians, Gridanian, and Lumitsan delegations. They will then begin construction of bridges to make the Tlothoro believe we are marching up to the tower. Meanwhile, the best suited the best suited of our Alamegan, Uldan, and Easter comrades will use a different method of ingress. Look here. We're here on this map that I've circled. The facility marked in red is Enceladum, a vast Magitech manufactory. In ruins now, of course. But the freight tunnel connecting it is erstwhile Imperial Palace remains intact. While Tulofroy's attention is elsewhere, our infiltration force can use it to enter the tower and detect it. Be aware, however, that the underground rail network remains very much operational. Tempered are using it to bring supplies to the tower even now. If it can carry their material, it can carry us too, providing we sneak aboard unseen. The signs will lead the infiltration party. One society was located in the spots of Daniel and Xenos. It's time we ended this once and for all. Aye, there will be no more casualties of the Lothroy's maniacal ambition. How quickly can we enact this plan? Mendano made it quite clear that haste is a priority. Of paramount concern, even assuming he didn't name the Tower of Babel on a whim. In Amon's time, it meant gateway to the gods. Zante used it to refer to a void gate, but in this case, it most certainly alludes to something altogether greater. The eldest and most powerful of primals. All the more reason to act now. The rest of the contingent is aware of the plan and re <clears throat> are ready to move at a moment's notice. If you are to proceed to the North Forum for Tens, Lisa's group will meet you there. As ever, we are grateful for your foresight. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Spare no effort in your preparations. See, this is why I take issue with fog weather. It covers up so much. Like, you can't even see the silhouette of the tower. And I'm rapidly approaching it. Not even the red glow. Into the tunnel is clear. We made sure of it. Then we best get inside before we freeze. Especially you. Your boob window. Oh, the shoe will be on the other foot once we're in, believe you me. Good fight you've almost right up. Hm. <laughs> Barely enough cloth to swallow a newborn. Clearly you've spent too long around this feral dog of a dull thaw. Watch your tongue, fool, lest I feed it to the crows. 
We will see who is the fool when you freeze to death. Expect me not to warm your ill-prepared hide. These furs are for myself and for my Nama alone. Should I be blessed to meet her this day? If any woman of worth would wish to be warmed by you, little son, should we find such a warrior within, she will bask in my glorious flame. Oh, stop, both of you! Save your fire for the enemy. As for extra furs, I have plenty to spare. As do we. Oh, everyone's changing clothes now. Hello everyone, all set for battle I see. Yes, feel free free of unnecessary encumbrances, if rather more susceptible to the cold. Let's review our strategy quickly, if you don't mind. Pippin's group has gone ahead to the Insulatum. We ought to meet them in there. We wait until the Tempest's attention is drawn by our divisionary force, then we sneak onto the train. Next stop, the Tower of Babel. If any Tempest included are injured, we Zella will tend to them. Your science must press on no matter what. We should avoid moving as a group until we're underground, so we'll need to make our own ways to the Ancelenum. See you there. Well, if everyone's getting all dull. God damn it. If anyone's getting all dolled up, then I too will apply my armor at last. I would wear the mask, but I kind of want to get my facial reaction, so. Save. Now to fly all the way back. Inside or the outside? Okay, this is the inside. Hey, it's good to see you, Niren. We heard that you collapsed, but we're given on the most cursory explanation. Glad you recovered and quickly enough to take part in the operation at that. As you will have heard, we scurried, uh, said scurried, secured a way in. Saw some few ought to remain behind to keep your escape route clear. Our comrades from Lente Steel will lead the way into the station. I'll join you soon. The station is right this way. So it's lightning now. This is everyone. Consider the enemy well and truly distracted. Time to go. 
Our primary objective is, of course, to Lothrae's leaders. But should we present an opportunity to vanquish Anima, we must seize it. If it is indeed the force behind the towers, destroying it will deliver our allies from the Telophoroi's reign of terror. And I, for one, would not see the Garlean people manipulated any longer, be it by Primal, Asian, or anything else. Hear, hear! It's been enough of that! We came together to help the people of Garlemald, and that's what we're going to do. Together. To the very end. The range should be along any moment now. Prepare to board, everyone. Alright, with that, unfortunately, I am out of time. I will be resuming this later today to round out part one no matter what. Until later.